All right, everybody, this is Bud from Bud's Northeast Outdoors. I know I haven't been making a lot of videos lately. I kind of got sidetracked here a little bit. I've been making my own uh, baits, and some of them are musky pike baits. And believe it or not, boy, you save a ton of money on these things compared to what you would pay off the Internet or going to a bait and tackle store. I'll put it this way, I did my own cowgirl, and I think it come out pretty awesome and uh, I'll show it to you in a second but anyway uh, it come out really good I got a little fine tuning here left to do on this one part it's being a pain but anyway a slight adjustment on it, it's better to find out now than when I get it out in the in the field or on the water as most people would say I guess but I'm gonna test these baits these are all my own unique color patterns I bought a airbrush over the winter I used to airbrush back when I was younger and I thought to myself you know oh, there's the pug if you wonder where he's been he's on probation he's hooked up he can't get out of off the kitchen off his leash that way he can't take off and do something bad and if he does, I don't have to chase him into my bedroom and try to get under the bed to get him. That's going to be one thing when I get that shot collar. It's going to, going to make life easier. I can punish him no matter where he is. And he'll learn not to do it. So anyway, here's my first bait. This right here is a spinner bait I custom painted. Um, the skirt came from Lure Parts Online. I don't know if you can actually make it out, but it's chartreuse. Shut up. Shut up. Hey, I'm going to replace you, and this is phalo green with a black tip. And if you notice, I painted the head the same colors with black highlights on the top and a red belly to kind of look like a perch. I think it come out pretty nice. It's got a glitter skirt. It's a star flash skirt. I believe I got this at Lua Parts Online, or I might have got it at my local Bass Pro. They have a do it mold section with a bunch of different skirts. But I think that one came out pretty good. Then I took, and I admit, I didn't do much to these. All they were were kits. This is a true image uh, perch bait. And you buy the blade, and it's already done. The head on it's already colored. This is actually one of their perch colored skirts. So all you do is just basically punch it together, bend this arm so that the swivel doesn't come off, and that's it. Here's another one that came from true image this here's the rainbow trout color same thing you put the blade on you, you get a swivel you bend the head you slide the skirt on it's all pre-done that's it probably takes five minutes and it costs maybe three four dollars for this whole thing well no maybe four or five because it's like you get two blades for like two bucks so it's about a dollar for the blades I think it's two dollars for this I think it's like 50 cents each for the skirts. I think you get, well, maybe a buck for the skirts. So, I mean, if you were to buy this in the store, it would probably cost you 10, 15 bucks. So you're, you're making it for maybe five or six, plus whatever the postage costs you. So in that respect, I also have the bluegill one. And in true bud fashion, I forgot to get the blades for this one. So I already ordered them and I waited to put the blade when I get the blades we'll put them on but this is the bluegill pattern so that looks pretty nice right here is my uh, my version of the uh, the pike musky bait the double cowgirl as you see it's got two blades on it and that that actually took a little bit I had to do a little YouTube and to check that out see how that's done and it's got um, like an olive and turquoise green color beads and then it's got a, a tube for a spacer and I will tell you this I did not paint this head this is an epoxy head from lure parts online and this all came as one unit minus what I did up here with the blades the beads and the tube this came all painted it all came with one piece with a head on there and this skirt is one of their magnum skirts so I think this puppy here is going to be deadly I mean, I don't know. Pete Maynard seems to have pretty good luck with his cowgirls, and everybody 
says they're the number one lure on the market. So we'll see what, what Bud's Cowgirl can do. And then Al Winder's always talking about twin spins in cold water. So I took and made this. And it's got purple anodized blades. I did not color those. I, it looks blue on the camera, but trust me, they're purple. And anyway, I got this bluish purple and black skirt. Kind of like something for a jig. You know, the black and blue thing. And it's got a little bit of glitter in it. It's, you know, some uh, flashaboo. And it looks pretty nice. So, you slow roll this down near the bottom, according to Al. And I painted it purple. I, I actually put on the eyes that I bought. Whoops. Take the camera out. So, I painted all that. Left the bottom with the white belly. But this here was all done with a, with a spray brush. Now, one of my pride and joys is this buzz bait. I think this come out so awesome. This here is, the Accent Lures had a, a bait called the B4 Buzz. And, oh my God, they're hard, they're hard to order from. They are almost impossible. So I gave up. I mean, they don't take credit cards online. I don't know. Maybe they do now, but anyway, these are um, clockwise and counterclockwise rotating blades. I custom painted these things, chartreuse and the phalo green, a little bit of that on the outline. I don't know if you can see it there. It's the darker areas. And then a little bit of black. And these blades in the center are black. And I think this thing here is going to be a killer. I really do. I'm sorry about that camera, but I really do think this is going to be a killer bait. I can't wait to use it once topwater season starts. You know, it's killing me to wait. And if you see, I got a little accent flash in there. I don't know if you can see that. But it's pretty sweet. You know, I love it. I love the way it come out. It's really cool bait. And I honestly, I can't believe I made it. I, I took and put a stripe. I don't know why I did it on the belly instead of the... No, that's the head. So the belly is kind of lighter right there like the other patterns I've used. So this thing here is going to be unbelievable. One blade spins one way, the inside blade spins the other. Same thing on the other side. These blades, whoa, were actually designed to work on a single buzz with, you know, and you could design it with the two props. So anyway, this is pretty decent. I really, really love this this idea. And I, I really hope it works out awesome. I. I don't know if I'm going to catch any state record on it, but I hope to catch multiple fish. So anyway, here's another pike slash musky bait I did. It's got glitter tinsel on it, and once it gets in the water, it'll kind of calm down. It's a little bit like an afro, because it's like the tinsel on your tree. But anyway, once it gets in the water, it'll calm down. I custom painted this head, too. Um, this one here, if you can see, I, I painted it like a brown copper color. I'm trying to imitate the color of a, a smallmouth bass. I think what I really needed to do though was come down with a few stripes to imitate the smallie to make it look just a smidgen more realistic. But I took and clear coated all these parts. So to add color on them after the clear coat's probably not going to work. You know. So anyway, I clear coated these to seal the, the airbrush paints. Because the airbrush paints are actually a real thin coat. And they're not super durable. So. I used this gloss coat polyurethane type spray paint and all of these lures that I did these didn't come on or didn't come painted um, this one here I had to prime this one here um, like I say those true image lures um, those right there they came with the heads already done with the holographics applied and this one here I had to prime and I can't wait to use this one in the cold water or on a, a day when the, the bass aren't super active. Because Al Linda says that's a killer even when it's when it's uh, bad weather. So I can't wait to try that out. And hopefully I get the boat registered this weekend. It's my birthday weekend. So, you know, it's one of those things you have to do every year. I look forward to it so much. And I have to have the boat trailer and a car and everything all registered. My camper. Which I don't use much and I may put it up for sale. It's an old Coleman. It's a 19, I believe 90 or 89, and I may put it up for sale. I, I bought it a few years ago for 500 bucks, and it's in super condition. 
Uh, I haven't popped it up, so hopefully the mice and squirrels and chipmunks haven't gotten a hold of it. But I put stuff in there that was supposed to repel them. So anyway, you guys all have a good day, and now you know what I've been up to. And when I make my next one, I'm going to make another one called, um, what the hell is it? I can't remember what I was going to call it. That's crazy. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> but anyway, it's like lime sickle or something like that. Or limeade, actually. Limeade is the color. There used to be popsicles when I grew up. Of course, this is why I'm having a hard time remembering it. It was like 56 years ago. And I'm going to be 57 here and on Saturday. But anyway, um, years ago, they had this lime sickle one. And I really didn't like lime. And I think the reason the popsicle places came out with this was because the lemon part was really good. It was like lemonade. But the lime thing, you know, people didn't really seem to uh, go crazy about having lime popsicles. They weren't the first ones to get picked. Well, anyway, this here was like a chartreuse green with pink on the bottom. So it was lime on the top. That way they got you to eat the lime and it was pink on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these blades, one of these willow leaf blades, and what I've been using on the, uh, these are half ounce by the way, my, my one here that, this is 3 eighths, the twin spin, because it's a slow roll bait, and uh, where's my custom one that I was just talking about? I can't find it, I misplaced it. Where'd it go? Oh, it's, no, that's not it. Where'd it go? Jeez, it should stick right out. Here it is. It was buried underneath musky baits. But this one here, this blade here, I'm going to paint the front chartreuse and the back pink. Then on the other side, I'm going to paint the front pink and the back chartreuse. So every revolution, it flashes those different colors. And according to Al Linder, who is my hero, I mean, he's like the Ted Christopher of fishing. That guy right there swears that smallmouth bass hate the color pink. And we all know they don't really care for chartreuse too much. They attack that. So I'm going to do the double, the double color thing and fade them in the middle. Leave the middle kind of a white and fade it in pink. Chartreuse, chartreuse, pink. And we'll see how that works. That should be a killer bait. I'm actually going to buy some crankbait um, bodies that aren't painted. And I'm going to paint those up and we'll, we'll bring you there for that. Like I say, my next lure is going to be that uh, limeade thing. And I'll bring you along. I'll actually paint it in front of you so you can see it. And we'll, we'll do it all together. That way we'll have a good time. It's just this YouTube thing. Believe it or not, it takes a lot of effort. I mean, to set things up and get it ready for the camera. And then to edit and transfer everything, splice it together. Is, I don't know if you've noticed, but I, I can't go like start to finish without stopping the video. I mean, I just, I don't know. Maybe I just ain't got the hang of it. I mean, I wish my videos were professional like Bill or Syntax or some of these guys. I mean, the way they splice the music and stuff in. You know, I got music now, but it's kind of like start to finish stuff. And it's pretty much the same song or different songs spliced in. But anyway... You know, I'm trying. I'm giving it a shot. Hopefully I add a little bit of action when I get the drone. But anyway, this video ain't about that. It was about these lures I'm making. And if you have any ideas on something you'd like to see me do for a different color combination or even a different type of lure, I've got the plastics coming here in about two weeks. I'm waiting for my income tax to come back because that plastic stuff is expensive. $64 a gallon. But... They say you can make 128 baits with that, and 128 baits, I've got the Kitek uh, swing, swim bait is one of my molds, and those puppies are about six bucks for five of them, so I'm thinking I could probably make a little off of that. I got colors and glitter, and oh my god, this stuff right here is expensive. But in the long run, I'll end up saving money, and I'll have fun making it. I'll get the satisfaction of catching fish off of my own stuff. So anyway, here we go. I'm, I'm into the hobby of homemade lures. I got a saltwater tank. I got the YouTube thing going on. I do eye racing. You know, I, I've, I'm a busy guy. Bill Gaddy thinks he's busy. I'm busier. 
And plus I do all this outdoor cooking and camping. My camping schedule's outrageous for the first oh month and a half. I'm going to I'm going to Little River on Memorial Day. Two weeks later, I'm spending a week out at Saranac on the island. Two weeks after that, I'm going to Molly Stark. I'm going to hit Somerset, Harriman, and Sadagwa again. Uh, Sadagwa is the only one that I'll be repeating. The other two I couldn't really... Well, Harriman was scary, wicked current coming into it. And the boat ramp, of course, is right next to the river that comes in. So I was just a little nervous about that. Um, I mean, swift water. It was coming in that into Harriman probably about 30, 35 miles an hour. It was just screaming. It was white, like white water rafting type water coming in. And it's only about maybe, nah, I don't know, 100 yards from the boat ramp. And I got to thinking, boy, if my outboard won't start, I'm screwed. So I'd end up all the way down to the other end of Harriman with no way back except my trolling motor. And I already went through that up at, uh, up at <laughs> Moore Reservoir. I got all the way to the end. I got to thinking to myself, oh, my God. If my motor died, and I swear to God, 30 seconds after it, it shut off. And I had filled the gas tank, but I didn't bring a spare gas can with me because I didn't think I'd need to. And it's like 7 miles, the length of that, or 8 miles. And I was almost to the point where I couldn't go up north any further when the, the motor died. Well, anyway, huh, I had to use the trolling motor six and a half hours back to the boat ramp. The one down at the Vermont side up by the cemetery road. So anyway, I won't make that mistake again. What I did was I left the vent open on the gas tank. So on the way up, jiggling all over on the road, it made it evaporate. So when I started out, I only had maybe a third of a tank. But like I say, we won't make that mistake again. I bring a gas tank with me now. An extra one on any days that I plan on using the outboard a lot. Well, you guys all take care. And, you know, like I say, if you got any suggestions for lures, comment down below. I mean, I, I will try just about any any idea you have. Uh, I'm going to make different uh, pike lures for out to Saranac. I want a couple more. I'm actually going to make one of these here with the arm and this skirt. They have a bunch of different heads and skirts. This all came pre-painted. Like I say, I won't lie to you. They did a great job. It's got the gloss coat. And why paint it if you don't have to? I mean, there's a little bit of time in that. I mean, when you uh, prime them it takes maybe a half an hour for the paint to set up and then you really can't paint them till the next day or the paint curdles with the white so you gotta wait that one day or maybe paint a ton of them ahead which I haven't been smart enough to do yet or uh, you know I suppose you could put them in like a toaster oven or you know use the blow dryer but I tried the blow dryer and that doesn't really work that well with that primer you can you can dry the airbrush paints with the with a blow dryer but this stuff right here it, it's not as uh, air dryer friendly we'll say so anyway you guys take care check in again like and subscribe if you like this stuff like I say I'm trying to do a lot of interesting things I know uh, sometimes I get long winded and you know like like Bill says this video is not about that well I do that like three or four times during a video so hopefully you can put up with me and and hang in there well, you guys all have a good day. Take care. This is Bud. Another adventure over. Have a good day. Bye.